Hello, and welcome to the GRACE podcast series. My name is Denise Brock, and I am the Operations Director for the Global Resource for Advancing Cancer Education, or GRACE. In this podcast series, we interview patients, advocates, and healthcare professionals to provide the most updated information for our community and to highlight important issues facing those dealing with a cancer diagnosis. We hope you find this information valuable. For questions or comments, please visit us at cancergrace.org. My name is Stephen Liu. I'm an associate professor and director of thoracic oncology at Georgetown University in Washington, DC. Small cell lung cancer is a particularly lethal subtype of lung cancer. It accounts for about 13% of new diagnoses, but represents a disproportionate number of lung cancer deaths. Our historic standard for this disease has been chemotherapy, platinum plus etoposide. This is not new treatment. This was first introduced in the 1970s and it may seem like an effective treatment. It has a high initial response rate of about 60%. About 10% of patients will have a complete response, but that benefit is transient. The progression-free survival is limited to about four months, meaning most patients will progress either during or shortly after chemotherapy. Survival had been limited to about eight to 10 months on average. Despite these shortcomings, this has been our standard treatment for small cell lung cancer for decades. We simply have not been able to improve upon it despite many phase three trials. The first major advance for small cell lung cancer was immunotherapy. The initial signal uh, came in the previously treated space where we saw exciting activity. In Checkmate 032, the PD-1 inhibitor nivolumab, given either alone or with the CTLA-4 inhibitor ipilimumab, offered modest response rates around 10 to 20%, progression-free survival rates that were unfortunately quite short but impressive landmark survival rates, meaning more patients were alive at the one year and the two year mark. For example, the combination of nivolumab and ipilimumab had a two year survival rate of 26%. The number may seem low, but with any standard treatment in patients who've received many other treatments, that number would be quite close to zero. Based on the quality of these responses and the potential for durable survival, we saw the FDA approval of third-line nivolumab monotherapy in August 2018 and third-line pembrolizumab monotherapy in June 2019. These are important approvals, but the problem is that only about one in five patients will receive third-line treatment, which really limits the impact. So to increase that impact for these potentially transformative medications, we try to introduce immunotherapy earlier. Checkmate 331 was a randomized phase three trial comparing second-line nivolumab versus standard topotecan chemotherapy. Disappointingly, this was a negative trial. Nivolumab failed to improve survival over topotecan. Even earlier, Checkmate 451 explored maintenance immunotherapy. Patients who completed chemotherapy and then immediately received immunotherapy before progression did not derive benefit. The use of nivolumab and ipilimumab as maintenance treatment after chemotherapy did not improve survival over placebo. No, it was in the first-line setting where we saw practice-changing data. The first trial to explore this approach was Empower 133. This was a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled phase three trial for patients with untreated extensive stage small cell lung cancer. In this study, all patients received standard chemotherapy with carboplatin and etoposide and were randomized one-to-one to receive concurrent atezolizumab, which is a pdl one antibody, or placebo, followed by maintenance of tezolizumab or placebo. The co-primary endpoints were progression-free survival and overall survival, and this was a positive trial, meaning both endpoints. We saw an improvement in progression-free survival with a hazard ratio of 0.77, but most importantly, we saw an improvement in overall survival with a hazard ratio of 0.70. This translates to an improvement uh, in survival, a reduction in the risk of death by about 30%. This was the first improvement in survival we've seen in decades. And importantly, it did not come at the cost of significant toxicity. We also saw improvements in patient quality of life. And this landmark improvement led to the FDA approval of atezolizumab as part of the first line treatment for small cell lung cancer in March, 2019. We had waited almost four decades to see any improvement in survival. 
We waited less than a year to see the next improvement when we saw the results of the Caspian trial. This was an open label phase three trial for patients with extensive stage small cell lung cancer. They were randomized to receive chemotherapy alone, chemotherapy with the PD-L1 inhibitor Dervalimab, followed by maintenance Dervalimab, or chemotherapy with Dervalimab and the CTLA-4 inhibitor Tremolimumab with Dervalimab maintenance. What we saw was that the addition of Dervalimab to chemotherapy improved survival. Here, the hazard ratio is 0.73, and survival curves that appear very similar to Empower 133 with atezolizumab. This led to the FDA approval of Dervalimab in March 2020. The third arm of that trial, featuring Dervalimab with Tremolimumab, unfortunately did not meet its survival endpoint. The addition of Tremolimumab increased toxicity, but did not offer gains in survival. In June 2020, we also saw the results of Keynote 604, a randomized phase three trial of pembrolizumab, a PD-1 antibody with chemotherapy. While pembrolizumab improved progression-free survival, unfortunately, it did not meet its survival endpoint. There was a trend towards improvement in survival, but it did not cross the predetermined threshold for positivity. This limits its clinical practice impact, but it validates the approach that the addition of immunotherapy to chemotherapy does improve outcomes. In an attempt to identify patients who are deriving that benefit, we explore different biomarkers. An important one is PDL1 expression, which is useful in non small cell lung cancer. PDL1 expression was explored in Caspian, in Empower 133, and in Keynote 604. And while PDL1 was detected on some tumor cells, it did not prove useful in determining who derives that benefit. PDL1 expression cannot be used to select patients for immunotherapy in small cell lung cancer. Tumor mutational burden is often explored in cancers as a predictive marker for immunotherapy benefit. Blood-based TMB was explored in Empower 133, but also did not serve a predictive role. Whether it was low or high, regardless of cutoff, patients derive benefit from immunotherapy. Our current standard of care is to deliver concurrent atezolizumab or dervalimab with chemotherapy, followed by atezolizumab or dervalimab maintenance treatment in an all-comer approach. Thank you again for joining us. This podcast was made possible by the generosity of sponsorship from our friends at Lilly, Novartis, Decada, AstraZeneca, and Exalexis. Please like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Send us feedback, share your story, donate and visit us for more information at cancergrace.org. Thank you for listening.